Hey, so yesterday you guys saw me get my sprint coach, Mr. Jimmy Radcliffe. He's gonna help me try to break 11 later this year. Um, but in that video, uh, I'll link it right here, I referenced um, that he is the one that really turned me into a guy that had a lethal finishing kick. And I referenced a race from 2007, the 2007 Prefontaine Classic. It was my first big international win, and it's really what launched my international career. I realize a lot of my subscribers are young and they don't necessarily remember that race, but it was a monumental moment in my life, and I think it's really what shaped my pro career. So I actually am gonna go ahead and review that race. I'm gonna tell you uh, kind of what was happening leading into that race, how I felt going into it. I'll actually give you a play-by-play -play during the minute and 44 seconds um, of race time, and then tell you kind of what happened after that race. So let's jump right into it. I'm gonna cue the video up right now. Okay, here it is, all queued up. Um, I'm nervous just watching this. I, I remember how I felt. Before I press play, I wanna set the season up for you guys a little bit. Um, this was my first professional season. I turned pro in 2006 um, at the end of my collegiate season. Uh, but really, this was my first pro season and it had already been a long one. The Prefontaine Classic took place in June, uh, but I started my season in January. And on January 11th, 2007, I broke four minutes in the mile for the first time. Um, I ran three minutes and 56 seconds at the Dempsey Center up at University of Washington. And that was really when the clock started for me that season. There were a lot of ups and downs that season. I went on to win the 2007 uh, US Indoor title at 800 meters. Um, and then I kind of just got flat. And my first few races in the outdoor season weren't stellar. Um, I, I thought maybe I'd peak too early. Maybe I'd train too hard and, and kind of spent all my energy indoors. And I was really worried going into outdoors that I wasn't gonna have a great season. I had an ex especially bad race two weeks before the Prefontaine Classic. And uh, one of my buddies came down to visit me um, the week before. And we went out and we had some beers, which turned into more, to more beers. And literally the week before this race, I, I was behind a bar uh, here in Eugene, Oregon, throwing up. Um, I shut the bar down at 2 a.m. And that was my way at 23 years of age of dealing with my, my frustrations of the way the season was going. I don't recommend this. It's the last thing I should have been doing, but again, I wanna be totally honest and transparent with you guys. A week before this race, um, I, was, I was blacked out behind a bar. Um, embarrassed to admit it. But what happened is uh, I ended up picking myself up the next day, met with my coach, Coach Gags at the time. We talked about how to, how to get ready for this race. Um, and as you guys are gonna see, it really materialized. So I'm gonna go ahead and press play. Um, one thing I didn't mention is that I actually had, had a tweaked hamstring. Um, surprise, surprise, you know, drinking the week before, I dehydrated my muscles and actually tweaked my hamstring. So I had just barely decided to, to actually commit to this race. Um, in many ways, I was a place filler, kind of a no-name D3 kid in this race. Uh, but I wasn't about to pass up the opportunity to race the defending Olympic gold medalist. I'll press play now. So this field is deep. Um, there I am at the top of the screen there, and Alfred Yego of Kenya actually went on to win the world championships uh, a year later. Gary Reed, the Canadian national champion. Yuri Borzakovsky, the defending Olympic gold medalist. I mean, look at this field. And there he is. This was his season opener, um, so you know, take it with a grain of salt that I was able to beat him but he was still very, very heavily favorited. Uh, Kadivas Robinson here, one of my early rivals, um, he was ranked number one in the U.S. leading into this race. I had never beaten him before, actually. My personal best going into this race um, was 145.83, and I'd ran that the year previously. Uh, at the U.S. Championships when I lost to KD. So I'm, I'm definitely one of the slowest guys on paper going into this race. This is at Hayward Field, of course, in Eugene, Oregon. My home, my home crowd. I'm in lane one there, and I, I, you can see I'm in dead last uh, with Yuri. We both have similar tactics. It was to run more even splits. Uh, and I felt a little bit of comfort actually seeing him there. He was really the guy that I was planning on keying off of. I thought if Yuri's gonna go out this slow, then I don't mind going out this slow. 24 low for the 200 meter splits, pretty quick. And look at Yuri, he's still 10 meters off the pack. I felt glad that I was at least glued to the pack. My buddy Matt Shear pacing here, he was a training partner of mine on OTC and a phenomenal rabbit. He could hit a split to about 
a hundredth of a second. Uh, I'll be honest, I think I came through in about 51 seconds here, and I was a little bit panicked. I was so far back in the pack. I looked at all those bodies, I said, there's no way I can get around this many people. Um, you see me move out to the outside of lane one there. Um, I start to try to move past, um, I think I'm going from eighth to maybe seventh here. Um, but then a big moment happens right here. Watch what happens. Yuri Burzakovsky, the Olympic gold medalist, comes up on my shoulder. And I just thought to myself, I've got to follow him around the track. There, Yuri moves from fifth to third. And I'm just glued to his heels. Yuri swings wide into the inside of lane two and starts to make his signature move. And I'm still just following Yuri around. At this point, I think I might be able to finish top three, but I see Yuri fail a little bit, and I lean at the line, and I get my first big win. 144.55, a new personal best by over a second. And the crowd did go nuts. They were so kind and generous to bring me across that line. I think they got really fired up to see a hometown kid win this race. Always, always loved racing in front of Hayward Field. How about that throwback organ singlet, too? How great is that? I didn't really know what this meant at the time. Here, I'll let you watch the replay. That's exactly what I was saying. Goes with him, moves up toward the front of the pack, and then on the home stretch, Simmons able to have just enough to hang on. Look at Kadivas Robinson in the yellow, holding a lead, had run what we thought was the smartest race of all. Then you see Gary Reed. You can see my cheeks puffing there. I'm really digging deep to try to keep up with Yuri. Um, I, I thought I was just going to be glad to finish second or third, but uh, had this last little bit of surge. That's, again, that's the crowd lifting me up. I knew they wanted to see me cross that line first. Uh, I can't even describe the feeling. It's, I think we've got an interview here. Give me two seconds. Titleist at Willamette University in Salem. His time, 144. So Yuri finished second. Uh, Kadivas was third. Three people, the top three, all under 145. That's a great, great race. You are in here at the Prefontaine. You said you were starstruck. You didn't even belong here. You remember that? I remember watching the race in the mile. I was watching Webb, and I'm like, he's running pretty fast. I wasn't really racing myself, but. But here you are, like, a little out of breath. I always hated the interviews right after the race. Win here in Oregon in front of your home fans. What does it mean to you? Oh, this is the most incredible feeling in the world. I knew I was ready to run fast. I knew it was a deep field. I just wanted to be in the hunt. And I said, if I'm in the hunt with 200 to go, I like my chances. Watch the replay on television. I just watched it, but the thing was, the crowd, man. I could feel it building and building and building. For a second there, I was like, I don't know if I got it. And then I felt the crowd, and I just dropped with that last gear. I've never found that gear before. Never found it. Found it today. Found it today. That's right time for it. Thank you very much. Simmons, big win here in front of the Guys, that gear time. that I'm talking about there, that's the gear that Coach Rad helped me develop. That was a year in the gym, a year of building base, a year of sharpening to be able to do that. Um, and I think you can see the, the joy and surprise on my face. This is the moment that put me on the international stage. Um, and I look back and I, I smile. It's, it's almost 15 years ago now. Um, and you know, it's just it's just an incredible moment that uh, that really kind of told me, hey, I'm making the sacrifice to be a pro runner, and all the training, all the sacrifices are really worth it. You know, I actually went on to finish second to Kadivas Robinson at the U.S. Champs this year um, in 2007. Um, but I look back on that season as just being, you know, a lot of firsts: first time under four, first international win, first world team. I went on to compete at uh, the 2007 uh, World Championships in Osaka. And looking back on this race, you know, just just very proud of this young man for keeping it together and uh, and running two laps fast. So I've got a lot more races I want to go through with you guys, including the 2008 Olympic Trials win, the 2012 Olympic Trials win, and of course the 2012 Olympic Finals, where I ran my fastest time, 142.95. So all those are coming up. If uh, if you enjoyed this or if you're excited about seeing more race reviews, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found this helpful. See ya.